Justin, um, I'll open it up to you. And, and if you don't mind, not only talk about the victory today, and, and this was a vision of yours and, and something you've been behind, but also you were a fan of doing a, a street race and something that you've been vocal about at times. Just talk a little bit about today coming to Chicago and then Trackhouse taking home the win. Well, I'm, I'm a huge believer in, in street races. I mean, I've, I've raced in a number of them in my, my career as a driver, uh, Long Beach and Detroit and a couple of these. And, you know, I think it's... Um, you know, when they first started motorsport, when, when racing first started, it was cars on streets. And so it's a, it's a very, very pure uh, form of the sport, a very pure expression of, of automobile racing when you do it on streets like this and they shut them down. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan because, you know, I think that there's there's an important, it's important for racing series to take the product to the fans and to be able to take it into these cities and, and you know, expose a, a lot of new fans to it. So I've been a huge fan of of uh, the Chicago street race, the concept of NASCAR going street racing from the get-go, um, huge supporter of it. Uh, and I think that they had knocked it out of the park this weekend. I mean, the, the track was great. Uh, the, everybody was really, there was a ton of people there. Everybody walking the sidewalks was really, really excited about it. And, and even in the industry, everybody that I talked to in the garage area was was like, man, I, you know, I had, I had some trepidation about it but this is unbelievable this is awesome everybody was just wide-eyed and really really excited about it and um you know we obviously had challenges with the weather but uh but i mean really excited that nascar was able to get the race in and and get it started and and it was a great show i mean it was a very very compelling race so so really really proud of nascar really proud of of the vision that they have and, and these street races th th these street races are a lot of work and, and I want everybody to understand just how hard it is to do this and working with the municipalities, infrastructure, equipment, ingress, egress, safety, you know, all of that. I mean, this is, it's a huge, huge lift. And, uh, you know, for NASCAR to, to, to have the vision to do it and Ben and everybody have the vision to do it and to pull it off like they did, I think they deserve a ton of credit for it. And I think it was an amazing event. With that being said, you know, with, it was, you know, it's so amazing and important and meaningful for Trackhouse to be the company to win the inaugural street race uh, because obviously it's it's a huge moment for the sport and it's it's important and it's incredibly um, important for the company to be able to to be the winners of the inaugural race. Uh, so I think we're all just incredibly humbled to be the ones standing in victory lane. Um, and then as far as, you know, Project 91 goes, this was a shower idea. I mean, it was, it was just, it was me thinking, I'm a huge fan of, of all different kinds of motorsports, and I've raced in all different kinds of motorsports. And, um, you know, I wanted to bring my love of global motorsport to NASCAR and put a brand around it and create sort of a, a landing spot for you know, the elite talent globally that wanted to come try NASCAR, instead of just putting them in a car and crossing our fingers and watch them do their thing, but actually build a program that's catered to, you know, elite motorsport talent and have a, a training protocol and a preparation protocol so we can be we can be successful. A lot of work went into that. So, uh, you know, for, for us to... Um, to be in victory lane with Project 91, uh, it's it's hard to find the words. It's incredibly, incredibly humbling. You know, Kimi Raikkonen and and Chevrolet were a big part of getting this thing going, and then for us to be able to grab a guy like Shane, who I'm a huge fan of and have been a fan of for a long time, you know, put him in this position and you know just just watch him do his thing was I think an, not great for our company, but an incredibly compelling thing for the fans and for the industry and for everybody that was here this weekend. All right, we'll go ahead and bring up our race winning crew chief as well, Darren Grubb. Darren, go ahead and come up here and join us. Before we go to questions, we'll grab a quick comment here. Pull this guy out of retirement as a crew chief. <laughs> From Darren, that, right was back actually, lane. <laughs> that was actually going to be my question. Darren, you, you've had wins, you've had championships, but um, maybe tell us where this one ranks today. I think this one ranks up there pretty high. Um, just the fact that Justin puts faith in the whole group there at Trackhouse Racing and being able to put this on as an extra effort and come here and then just see all those guys get to go to victory lane. Uh, it's the shop foreman is the car chief, Gary Putnam. And those guys, they, they all poured extra into this. It's outside of their normal jobs. We still had to do those. We still had to go do the shakedown test that NASCAR allows us. We did a lot of extra work. The engineers did an amazing job in preparation. And then I have to say, Shane just did an amazing job as well, just in preparing and asking the right questions, being prepared for this event. 
We'll go ahead um, and open for questions. We'll work to get as many questions in as we can. I know we've got a lot of hands up. So hang with me a bit. We'll work our way around the room. Um, and we'll start up front with Matt Weaver. Matt Weaver, Sports Not. Justin, um, last week at Nashville, you said that that was, you thought, maybe, I don't know if you said it was the most important win or the biggest win, but to win a traditional NASCAR race um, on a mile and a half-ish, um, you thought that was extremely significant. So I'm curious, how does this, your your baby car, Project 91, inaugural streets of Chicago, how does that compare to Nashville? Well, I think, I mean, it's, this is an incredible win for the company. Uh, it definitely ranks up there. It's just, it's different. I mean, it's, and I'm still sort of processing it, to be honest, because it's, it's so new um, right now. But, um, I mean, I think it's, it's important in the sense that, you know, it's it's um, a lot of what we're trying to do at Trackhouse is new and different and exciting for the sport. We're trying to inject something into the sport that, that it hasn't seen before, that the fans haven't seen before. And so I think, you know, it, it's really important because it comes out of that creativity that we all share and the passion that we have in trying to put something out on the racetrack that's really unique and compelling. Um, and, and it's kind of a, you know, it was, it was, it's not a crazy idea. Like people have, have done this before, but to put a brand on it and to actually, you know, build a group around it that, that, you know, Darian leads and, and go to the, go to the company and say, hey, this, this is, this is an idea that we want to do. And it's actually like a unit in the company. I mean, to put that into victory lane is, I mean, it's, it's hard to find the words for it because it's so different. Like it doesn't put anybody in the playoffs. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't. It, it doesn't really do any of that, but but it's um, but it's an it's a credible moment for the fact that we are trying to be a special team that's that's different and compelling and exciting for the fans and and you know for an idea a concept that I came to these guys with and said you know would you take this on would you do the extra work and take this on and for them to embrace it and then to put it in victory lane is is really. Um, you know, it's some, sort of like anything is possible. Like if you can dream it, you can do it. And um, yeah, that's that's kind of my emotions. It, it's it's hard because it's a little bit, it's just a little bit different because you know, obviously Shane's not a full time driver. It's his first ever race. It's not a full time team. There's no playoff implications. There's you know nothing like that. But it's just a great moment for our company and for Chevrolet and for uh, Enhance Health and for us as a group that's excited about just sort of doing unique, different things. Yeah, we're not too far removed from this being a I don't know if we're too far removed from this being like still a concept car. Um, how much does this win change your marketing pitch to those drivers, teams, people across the world, now that it's not just a car that's on track, now that it's a car in victory lane? Is that like a huge boost for the program? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't change anything. I mean, it's really, it, it's, it's, um, it just puts fuel in the tank as far as the fact that we're trying to, we're trying to build something here where, you know, the, the greatest drivers in the world uh, have a place that they can call home if they want to try NASCAR racing. And so, you know, for, for us to put it in victory lane, it just, it, it just shows, I think, the world that, this Project 91 is an, a very, very elite effort. And it's not about vanity. It's not about just you know, sponsorships. It's not about you know, social media. It's, it's about putting a program together that can actually win and um, tell great stories. And so I think the fact that we put it in victory lane, um, it just galvanizes our mission in trying to attract you know, the greatest motorsport talent in the world. OK, our next question will go to Jordan Bianchi, right behind you, Sam. Thank you. Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic. Uh, we'll start with Darian. Darian, your driver comes on the radio with a few laps to go and thinks something's wrong with the motor. What are you thinking and what are you trying to do? Or do you think anything's wrong with it or are you just trying to talk him off the ledge? Uh, just trying to talk him off the ledge at that point. Uh, we were looking at data, trying to figure out what it was he keyed up on there that he felt. Uh, he felt like the motor was giving up some at the end of the straightaway, but we were able to take the data and confirm that it wasn't. So I think it is just he was hearing the gremlins in his own head, realizing I'm leading the race and have the potential for the win there. This, this question is for both of you. With you know 12 laps to go, he's fifth. Did you guys think at that point he still was in the still in this? And then as you're watching him come up through the field, picking off a Chase Elliott, picking off a Kyle Busch, and then passing Justin Haley, kind of walk me through that. What you're thinking there? 
Yeah, I was a little nervous, honestly, when the we knew we were going to be racing to the darkness, and then that's when they announced that we were going to go to lap 75, and we still needed to pit at that point where some of the guys had already jumped it a few laps earlier with the risk thinking that was going to happen. So I was a little disappointed we came out 18th, but uh, after the first lap when he came around and we ended up 16th, and he showed his skill of passing those cars cleanly and just picking them off one by one, and then he was still the fastest car in the entire field running back in the pack. So knowing that he had that kind of speed at that point, I really wasn't too worried. Then when he got to fifth there with a few to go, uh, yeah, it was pretty confident at that point that he at least had the potential. And then we were just hoping for not having the cautions and the other things too that would take the time away to be able to do it. All right, Gluck, I think you had a question. Yeah, for both of you, I'm just kind of wondering, Obviously, like, you know, he has the talent to win, right? Like, you're going to this whole thing, and, you know, I'm sure in the sim and at the Charlotte test and all this stuff, you're like, wow, he, you know, if everything comes together, he could do it. But, like, it's still sort of a long shot. Like, we just don't really see this, right? So, at what point this weekend or today did it flip for you guys from, like, yeah, if, you know, he could win to, like, oh, I, he, he's, he's going to win? Honestly, for me, I would say it was Monday when we did the test at the Roval. I have to give kudos to NASCAR for letting us swap that program up and work more for the safety. We weren't allowed to do any setup changes or anything with it. It's just going to make laps. But being able to work on seat belts, steering column, brake pedals, and obviously with the awesome foot cam that was on there this week, everybody gets to see his footwork. So just adjusting brake pedals and pads and the throttle pedal and those things, that was critical for him to be comfortable in a car and be able to do what he could do. So thank you to those guys for changing that program and making it now where we can work about the safety and the consistency. But then that day, watching his disciplined approach of managing tire wear, let him do a long run. We did 26 laps there at the end of the test. Just let him feel how the tires would fall off. We were running part of the Legends course on the back stretch, so it's nothing that even correlates to anything we do on a racetrack. But those are corners that he felt like he could go attack and understand what it would be for a 90-degree corner somewhere. So those things, you see his talent level and you see his questioning of his own ability. And he wanted to go in there and try it five different ways. And you just sit there and watch. We don't have data on the car or anything, but you can see him learning with every lap. And he could do consistent laps all day long. And then when we got to the simulator later than the week, watching how he had studied what the other guys had done and being able to go out there lap three and beat their lap times in most cases was pretty impressive. And, and his feedback in the car matched exactly what we were expecting with simulation programs and everything we do with Chevrolet. Having their background over there and what we have here with Chevrolet, it was really awesome to see that feedback all match up. Yeah, I think I think for me it, it's for me it kind of just built throughout the week, right? It was sort of like, you know, it, it we had a lot of, um, um, you know, hope and belief that he could be very very competitive. But as soon as he landed, it was like his his focus and his understanding of what we were doing was really really impressive, and his learning curve through the week great sim session you know he was really he came to Nashville last weekend and sat on the box and was really plugged in asking questions and really absorbing it all and then as the week went on it was like one of the best sim sessions these guys have had and you know great tests like Darian said and you know he wanted to spend a lot more time on our static sim at the shop than you know, he kept asking to go back to it and spent a lot of time on it and then when we got here you know through practice it was just it just started building it was like we all kind of were like man we've you know, we, we've got a real shot here. But there's always that thing in your mind. It's like, you know, NASCAR races just, they, they get kind of bananas. And there's, it's not just about the speed, right? It's about, you know, getting on and off pit road. He's never made a pit stop before in this, obviously, in this, this type of pit stop before. And these late restarts and you, you know, it's, there's just a lot of other variables. And so that's always in the back of your mind. You know, is that gonna, is that gonna play into sort of how, how the race goes, but you know, he, he showed so much speed and his, his approach and focus and everything in practice was in qualifying. He just adapted to everything so well. Um, and then as the race went on and he got into position there, you know, his, his speed late in the race was, was really, really good. And, and he's, you know, he's such a racer. He made those passes. He made the pass on chase. He made the pass on Justin and the caution came out and, and, um, you know the green typically the green white checkered is just like ah oh, man you're just you're nervous because it just goes crazy and things happen but the way they put the the um the restart zone you know i was i was i was remarkably calm honestly 
for the restart because I just knew if you just got through 12 and got the jump off there that, that you know, the whole build of the week, it was like there was no there was no anxiety about him making a mistake or missing his turn in or anything like that. And we just, just get to the white flag and get done. He just put on a clinic. It was unbelievable. All right, we're going to go to Dustin Long. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Justin, um, with this type of program as you build it, I know it's still early on, but the getting a win and getting this attention after having Kimi in the car, what do you feel like this can do in terms of getting the other, I guess, international sponsors and kind of growing it and, and making this maybe where at some point becomes more funding itself? And on the other hand, what can this do to kind of help NASCAR's push internationally, do you feel? I know it's not your main focus, obviously. Well, I mean, from a commercial standpoint, it, it was a big weekend because, because you know, we had a company come in that said, we want to sponsor Project 91. You go get the driver. It wasn't attached to a driver or anything like that. And Enhanced Health came in and said, we love this concept and, and you know, we want to sponsor it. So, so that was a, that was a, that's a big moment for our company is that actually, you know, a, a partner looked at it and said, we believe in this Project 91 thing siloed from everything else. We really, we really love it. We want to be a part of it. You know, I, I think as far as what it does, it, it, it just, you know, hopefully, I think it just makes Project 91 be on a lot more people's radar internationally. And, um, you know, we can attract, continue to attract uh, the top talent in the world. I think as far as like expansion and growth, you know, we didn't hire anybody for Project 91. Everybody that works on Project 91, like Darian said, already works for the company. They've got, you know, uh, other jobs for the company. And so, you know, I think as far as scaling Project 91, you know, it's a two or three race a year program. And beyond that, it starts to get it starts to get to be kind of a lift. It starts to sort of feel like a third a third team. So, you know, we're pretty committed to just being um, very focused on the races that we do and very committed and do them in, in a great way where we can come out here and, and win. Uh, and then as far as NASCAR, I mean, you know, we, Trackhouse, Trackhouse is, you know, we approach our partners, we approach NASCAR as partners. And, and we really want to help each other. And we've got a great relationship with the sport. And it's important to Ben. It's important to, to Jim and Lisa and Steve and everybody that, you know, this sport grows and that this sport becomes more and more internationally relevant. And if we can do all of the things where we can win for us and sign great sponsors and have great days like today, but also contribute to that mission, then we're here for that. And so, you know, I take a, I take a little bit of personal pride in being able to deliver something to that that international initiative because NASCAR racing is special. It's unique and there's nothing in the world like it. And I think the more people globally that we can get tuned in and excited about this sport, the better it is for all of us. And I think today was a step in that direction. And to check, Watkins Glen, that's the only other Project ninety one race. We don't we don't have any other Project ninety one races on the calendar right now. This is this is it right now. Right across from no, right over there so Sam in the tan. Yep. Hi, Justin. Andrew Clark from Auto Action in Australia. Um, firstly, thanks for bringing Shane over. It's made my weekend pretty good. Um, you're blowing up social media back home, by the way. Um, Project 91, um, can it go more than the three races a year if you've got the right sort of backing for it? And are you committed to rotating drivers or are you going to try and run Shane a bit more and then maybe turn it into a full-time drive in 25? Well, I mean, like I said, beyond probably three races, it starts to be a third team. It starts to really kind of drain, not drain, but take resources from, you know, the one in the 99 car, which is what we're really focused on in track house, getting both those cars in the championship and being able to make a championship run. The last thing I want to do is have Project 91 be, be a drain on that or take anything away from that. So I think three is really sort of the limit for us. You know, if we ever expand to a third full-time full team, it's good that we're going through this exercise right now with the 91. Because, you know, we're doing sort of three teams worth of work in the shop as we lead into the, the Project 91 races. But I, mean, I think, you know, beyond that, it's, it's um, you know, it, it, it starts to become a third team deal, which is a whole nother conversation for our company. So, um, and then beyond that, I mean, you know, I, I don't, you know, sh I'm, I'm pretty 
pretty confident that it's Shane's seat right now. <laughs> um, you know, he did su such an incredible job. Obviously, you know, just just put on an incredible, incredible race today. You know, the Project 91 is is about bringing all different kinds of, of drivers in, and we certainly still have the the desire to rotate uh, drivers through. Uh, but you know, winning feels pretty good, and Shane just did it. So if he can continue to deliver that, then I think that the door is open for him to do to do more for sure. And thank you for coming. Are you are you based here, or did you come from Australia? No, no, I came for this. You came for this. That's awesome. So Shane, all his whole his whole supercars team, they catered breakfast. You know, this cup race comes on at like eight thirty in the morning and uh, Monday morning there, and so they all were watching in the shop. Is pretty cool. I want to see pictures of that. Awesome. Yeah, so good. Awesome. All right, we're going to continue with questions. We'll go to Jonathan, right behind you, Kendall. Thank you. Uh, this question is for J Darian. Um, you've worked with a lot of different drivers over the years, Tony Stewart, Denny Hamlin, Carl Edwards. Uh, how was your experience with Shane compared to working with them, and where does that rank? Uh, I should say, like, professionalism and everything else, uh, he's very similar to all those. And I've been extremely fortunate in my career to be able to work with some of the names, like you said, Jimmy Johnson, Casey Mears, all those guys all had different qualities and I think Shane's definitely got some of those same qualities himself. He's just a leader. Uh, he came in very studious. He wanted to know. He, he was excited about Nashville. And, like, the commitment level he had, they left early from the Nashville race, even though the 1-1 one, one didn't do the party because he knew we had to do the robo test the next morning. He wanted to be back and be fresh and stuff for that. We got him in bed about 2 o'clock in the morning for it. So it was still a long night. But that type of professionalism and the, the commitment to what he wanted to do to come and improve himself and be prepared. He asked all the right questions. If he didn't know what question to ask, he would say basically, what am I not asking? And we sat and talked a lot. We ran through all the scenarios. And I have to say he was very well prepared. And for Justin, uh, I, I know your connections to the racing world and whatnot. Uh, who will, and I, I saw you on your phone there. Uh, what, what text messages have you received? Have you heard from anybody at all? Yeah, I was just replying to Chip Ganassi. We, we both won today. It was awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, um, you know, actually, there's a lot of text messages from the industry, from other other drivers and other other team members, crew chiefs. Um, you know, I think everybody recognizes how how cool of a moment it is for our sport that you know we've got somebody that came in like this and and really kind of mixed things up and. And I think everybody knows how important Project 91 is to Trackhouse, and you know they're just excited that it happened. I mean, Kyle Larson came to Victory Lane, a couple of drivers came to Victory Lane. I think it's just cool for everybody to see something different and something like this happen. Go to Daniel, and then to Lee, please. Uh, Daniel McFadden, FrenchChurch.com. Justin, I'm curious, like through this whole process with Project 91, you've said that you've reached out to drivers, drivers have reached out to you. To be a part of this, I'm curious with with Shane, like, how how did this relationship start? Did you reach out to him first? Did he express his interest? Like, wh what was the timetable that led to him being in the, this car last weekend in that test at Charlotte? Um, yeah, so I I reached out to Shane uh, last fall, probably like the end of last year, um, and. Uh, through a mutual friend just said, hey, you know, I'm Justin and we got this Project 91 deal and, and you know, you are, you know, you're sort of on the short list here and, and I called him um, and I think we FaceTimed or we called, we talked to each other, whatever, and I said, hey, you know, I would love to be able to run you. You know, it's, it's, we have to get sponsorship. Obviously, it's commercial driven. So we have to do our job here to get this thing funded. And if we get it funded and get the right people behind it where we can, where I can make the phone call, then I'll call you. And then, you know, four or five men months went by and he didn't hear from me. And, you know, we, we ran Kimmy at Coda and Enhanced Health signed on to, to, to sponsor the program. They said, you know, go get whoever you want. And, um, and then that's like the coolest phone call you get to make is to call Shane and say, hey, you want to come race for us? We got a seat for you. And he was all about it. And it was just about, you know, figuring out the logistics. And so um, I, it was important, you know, the, the supercar series in Australia was, was something that was really on my radar kind of from the get-go in Project 91. And, um, you know, Shane was the guy. He was like the, the first person and the only person really that I thought of. So I reached out right away and said, hey, I'm not, you know, I'm not offering you a, a ride yet, 
but um, but I'm working on it, and and if I can get to a place where I can call you and, and make the official offer, then I will, and that was able to happen this spring. Well, why, why wasn't the first race in Chicago? Why? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that, you know, if you look at cup racing, on the, especially with this new car on the street courses, you know, there's there's if you look around the world, the closest thing that there is to the NASCAR Cup Series anywhere in the world on, on road courses is the Supercar Series. I mean, the cars are very similar, um, and, you know, the talent, there is unbelievable. Obviously, we had Marcus Ambrose in the series for a number of years. You know, Scott McLaughlin came over and, and won in the IndyCar series. Um, and then, you know, when you look at you know, Scott Dixon and you, the guys from that part of the world, I mean, there's so much talent over there. And I fig I just sort of thought of it as like kind of an untapped resource. Um, and so, you know, really it was it was because it's it's. You know, it's difficult to take a guy like Kimi Raikkonen who's raced, you know, Formula One and put him in a full-bodied stock car. Obviously, incredible talent, but there's a lot to learn there. Whereas, you know, Shane's had a lot of experience in cars like this. And, and um, so I, I just I figured, you know, if, if, if a guy like him could come over and we could put the program together like we have for Project 91, that, that he could get to speed really, really quickly and be able to contend. To Lee. Lee Spencer, Catch Fence, congratulations, first of all, a remarkable drive. Um, for all of you, talking to the drivers yesterday and looking at the weather, you know, we, we kind of knew we were going to be dealing with inclement conditions in a wet road course, but are you guys like all salivating because you know he's got experience doing that and, and there's such a few number of drivers that are in the field that have raced under these conditions before? Well, I mean, for for me, I I was I didn't I did I didn't I don't think that any conditions were going to give us a better advantage or a disadvantage just because of his talent. I mean, I think that you know in the dry, obviously, um, you know he could win, and in the rain he could win. So I mean, I I think obviously he's he's got a a ton of experience, and you know I think when you bring somebody like this over that's got the experience that he's got, and in you know racing in the supercars in all different kinds of conditions that no matter kind of what the conditions were today, I think we had a great chance at winning. Yeah, I can second that too. And just the preparation through the week, we could see that there was a chance for rain and just taking, picking Shane's brain honestly about what he liked in a race car and what he preferred to drive and how he liked to set up. We knew that also trended towards the rain setup as well keeping everything really flexible, let the car move around, let the car have as much grip as possible. So he gave us the freedom to do that. So all the work we did in the simulator led us that direction. And it was definitely off the charts versus our teammates for what we were trying to do. And luckily, we can do that. We, we have the ability to explore. We had his direction of what he liked. And we were able to go out there and put that together. And obviously, he could go out there and get it done in either of those conditions. All right, I'm going to pause for just one second for Justin and Darian. Thank you guys both for joining us. Congratulations again on the win. We'll go ahead and let you guys go before we start with Shane.